In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my three level system for dressing for cold weather. Let's get to it. Level one, five degrees Celsius to minus 10. This is for moderately cold weather. The garments on this level are 90% synthetic and 10% animal fibers. My general rule of thumb is use synthetics as base layers and animal furs and fabrics as an exterior layer. Now there is one exception to this and that is merino wool base layers. Just like polypropylene, they are antimicrobial, they are moisture wicking, and they adapt to the temperature of your body. The outer layer of the level one system consists of a thicker, more heavy duty sweater or a jacket with a windbreaker exterior. Level one gloves are thin gloves, which allow for a lot of nano dexterity and finer finger movements, but don't provide a lot of warmth. These are usually very tight fitting thin gloves. For head protection, level one protection consists of a thin skull cap or a beanie, just enough to provide some cover to the ears. Contrary to popular belief, most of your heat is not lost through your head. Heat is lost equally throughout your body through the processes of convection, which is wind, conduction, which is heat loss via contact with a cold ground, radiation, which is the normal process of heat diffusing into a colder medium, similar to the heat radiating off a wood stove. And lastly, through evaporation, that is the movement of warm water away from your skin. Level 1 eye protection is standard sunglasses. For the lower body, a similar polypropylene base layer, which is made of a polyester spandex blend for flexibility and longevity. These materials last far longer than cotton, which is an absolute no-no when it comes to survival. Once wet, cotton loses most of its insulating properties and it's very hard to dry. Whereas polypropylene dries very quickly and it's very durable. It will last a long time. For the outer layer, I wear any standard pant. I typically wear a lightweight tactical pant. If I'm going to be doing more aggressive work, I may step it up to a heavier tactical pant like this one shown here that has built-in knee pads. Level one socks are darn tough socks. I've worn these socks for 10 years and the hunting variant are the ones that last the longest. These socks are made of a 68% merino wool, 29% nylon, and 3% lycra blend. They are seamless, so they are very comfortable. They are breathable, they are fast drying, and they almost never stink no matter how long you wear them. When you see antimicrobial written on any garment, what that means is that it destroys or inhibits the growth of microorganisms especially pathogenic microorganisms. Its primary function is to prevent bacteria and microorganisms from attaching to the fabric's surface. Cotton socks, for instance, are a magnet for bacteria and should be avoided like the plague. Level one shoes consist of a hiking winter boot crossover. I've used these Merrill hikers for many years with very positive results. In very cold conditions, it's most people's instinct to double or triple up on socks. I would strongly caution against this. The last thing you want to do is constrict blood flow to your feet. For this reason, when you buy winter boots, make sure they are loose fitting. If cold feet is a problem for you, you can use a sheepskin insole to help better insulate the foot. But this requires that extra space in the boot. One pair of socks in a loose fitting boot is better than three pair of socks in a tight fitting boot. In conditions that are around the zero to minus five mark, I sometimes will just wear my muck boots. These boots are rated down to minus 40 by the manufacturer, but in my experience, anything over minus 10, your feet are gonna start to get cold. However, these may be more effective if you're gonna be going through muddy or slushy conditions where you need a waterproof boot, whereas the crossover hiking slash winter boots offer greater agility and more comfort if you're walking long distances. You'll also be able to run faster in them. Level two. This level is for temperature ranges of minus 10 to minus 20. 
For most people, those are very cold conditions. The garments on this level are 75% synthetic and 25% animal. Just like level one, the base layers are polypropylene based or merino wool based, both work very well. If you're planning on spending several weeks in the sticks and you only have one base layer, your ability to wash it quickly will increase your comfort level a lot. My level two outer layer is a North Face Vostok jacket. This is comprised of 600 goose down fill. Goose down is a great material and has great insulative properties. The only problem is that if you get it wet, it takes a long time to dry and it loses some of its insulative properties. In the winter time, we're not too concerned with water because it's not gonna rain, it's gonna snow. You're gonna want a rugged exterior on your jacket. Many of the urban jackets and even mountaineering jackets have a very thin external layer, which is just meant to provide a wind protection shield, but it's not meant to withstand a lot of abuse. So avoid the thin tear prone exteriors as much as you can. Also ensure that you have heavy duty zippers on your jacket. A good sign of a quality jacket is a heavy duty number 10 YKK zipper. It says right on the zipper, YKK. If it has that on it, you can bet that the manufacturer at least put some attention into the quality of their product. Level two gloves are thicker, but they're still finger-based gloves. They have less nano dexterity, they allow for less movement than level one gloves, but they still allow you to do some finer work because minus 10 to minus 20, you can still get some work done outside. The gloves I use have a Gore-Tex layer. This makes them waterproof, but breathable. It's very important that if you do have a waterproof garment that you're using for survival purposes, that it is breathable to some extent. Otherwise, you're gonna start to sweat, and sweating not only causes a lot of heat to vacate your body, but it also allows for a buildup of moisture, which is not gonna dry, it's just gonna make you colder. Level two head protection is comprised of a thicker toque, which may come down a little further on the head. I also may use a neck scarf or a light fitting balaclava. But because my jacket has such a high collar, this is not always necessary although it does increase the comfort, especially if there's a lot of wind. For the level two lower body, there's a base layer of polypropylene once again. For an outer layer, I'm using ski pants on this level. You'll want a pair of ski pants that has a comfortable interior liner. It's also good if you can find ski pants with zippered ventilation. These tend to be very warm, so if you are doing a lot of work, you can start to work up a sweat, so it's nice to have some ventilation in there if need be. Just like level one, the socks I use are the darn tough hunting socks. That's common across all three levels. Level two boots are a fully fledged winter boot. There are plenty of different types of boots in this category. The same principles that I talked about in level one apply here. You'll want something with a temperature rating of at least down to minus 40 degrees because usually that only guarantees you minus 15 to minus 20 degrees. Something that is relatively waterproof, but breathable, has an antimicrobial component, has an aggressive sole that will offer some slip protection. This particular boot has what they call the tarantula system, where the sole has a gritty component that increases slip resistance on icy surfaces. In terms of the intersection of your pants in your winter boot, there are two options. You can tuck your pants into your winter boot, which in my opinion is a lot less comfortable. And if you get a good quality pair of ski pants, it will have an internal elastic cuff that will grip the winter boot. So the pants aren't pulling off the boot if you're bending over or if you're crouching down. Level three is for extremely cold temperatures. We're talking minus 20 down to minus 50. Temperatures which you're only gonna see in certain parts of North America and usually only for limited periods of time throughout a year. In this level, 40% of our garments are made of synthetic materials and 60% are made of animal materials. Level three upper body consists of a polypropylene base layer. For an outer layer, I use the Outdoor Survival Canada Atka jacket. This has a very rugged exterior. It has an aggressive downfill of 650 loft. It has a coyote fur trim. It does not have a snorkel hood, but it does have a detachable hood. So you could possibly get a snorkel hood and attach it to the jacket if need be by a zipper or by button. It has a minus 40 degree rating. It is water and windproof. It is moisture wicking, has very heavy duty zippers. In my opinion, it is far superior in warmth and comfort than Canada Goose. 
I deliberated on getting this jacket for many years because it's definitely very pricey. When I finally did pull the trigger, I'll never look back because in conditions between minus 20 and minus 50, nothing beats it. Many people wear Canada Goose nowadays as a status symbol for vain reasons, not for its actual functionality in cold weather. For gloves, I use beaver mitts. These mitts are handmade in Saskatchewan and we do actually sell these at CanadianPreparedness.com. The beaver mitts that I use have a buffalo leather palm and a sheepskin liner. When it comes to surviving in these types of conditions, there is absolutely no man-made material that can compete with animal fibers. Any glove that I have ever worn, it doesn't matter if it's a military grade wool mitt, my hands inevitably always get cold. That is not the case with these beaver mitts. Nowadays, you can spend up to $200 on a synthetic pair of gloves. And none of these gloves will come close to the amount of warmth that's provided by a pair of beaver mitts. Now, these are going to provide you almost no nano dexterity. So I would advise if you do get some of these mitts that you wear a very thin glove underneath them. That way, if you have to pull your hands out in these conditions, you're not completely naked to the elements. But if you're talking about pulling a sleigh over long distances or doing long treks in very treacherously cold conditions, nothing beats a pair of mitts, be it coyote, beaver, or raccoon-based furs. Level 3 head protection is a trapper's hat. This also is partly comprised of animal fibers. My trapper's hat has a rabbit fur lining. This is a very warm hat that even if you start sweating in it, it's still going to provide you insulation. That's one of the great things with animal fibers is that even if they're wet, it'll still insulate you from the cold. For face and neck protection at this level, I'll use a full on balaclava. Very windy conditions may even require snow goggles. Level 3 lower body is comprised of polypropylene base layer, an outer layer of Outdoor Survival Canada pants, which is comprised of the same materials as the jacket with 650 goose down fill, merino wool socks, only one pair, level 3 winter boots are the most extreme boots you can get, that's the Baffin Iger snow boots. These are good down to an astonishing minus 100 degrees. Now obviously once again, that's a manufacturer's exaggeration. With proper fitment allowing for adequate vasodilation of the feet, you should be able to endure minus 40 for prolonged periods of time in these boots. These really do feel like astronaut boots. The downside of these boots is that they are massive and they weigh a lot. You might as well call them gravity boots because gravity is going to love you. One of the great things I like about these boots is that they have Velcro, they don't use shoelaces, one of the most annoying things is to have your boot laces come undone in very cold conditions when you're trying to get work done. They also have a drawstring which really allows it to hug your calf and keep the cold air out. Some optional accessories that you may want to consider are hand warmers, Zippo hand warmers. The Zippo hand warmer is a reusable hand warmer but of course it requires fuel. I find these work great for really long periods of time. The purpose of the Zippo hand warmer is not to actually put in your glove, but to put in your pocket so you can periodically warm up your hands. It generates a lot of heat, a lot more than the throwaway hand warmers. The throwaway chemical hand warmers also have a purpose, but bear in mind if these get wet, they lose all their effectiveness. If you plan on doing any long distance trekking in a snowed in winter environment, snowshoes are going to be necessary you will expend several times more energy without sole shoes than you will wearing them. Make sure you get a pair that holds to your boot easily and securely and always account for your gear in assessing the weight rating of these snowshoes. So for instance, if you're a 200 pound man, don't get a 200 pound pair of snowshoes. Get a 250 pound pair of snowshoes because you may be carrying gear. Not only that is that you're going to want more flotation. Most people are surprised by the amount that you actually sink wearing snowshoes, but it's still much easier to walk than trudging through deep snow. Some things to avoid are gimmicky thermal reflective wear, which in my experience doesn't work that well, Michelin man type jackets, which are prone to tearing, and also garments that are heated via electricity. It takes a lot of energy to provide substantial amounts of heat. 
That's why those portable space heaters that you plug into your wall take so much electricity to run to provide such small amounts of heat. A small lithium battery that hides in your glove or in your jacket or in your shoes is not going to provide you with a lot of heat. These are gimmicks and I would avoid them like the plague. I've tried heated insoles and heated gloves and none of them deliver as promised. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comment section and check out these other videos which are winter survival related. And if you want any of these items in this video, links are in the description. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.